Good afternoon YouTube, KF7IJZ here, taking this opportunity on what is quite a pleasant day in February, um, <clears throat> but taking the opportunity while my wife and daughter are out of the home to disassemble my portable ham radio go box that I constructed last year. Um, this was seen in my field day video because that's the last time I've used it. It actually has not really been um, messed with too much since then. And I want to swap out the HF radio in it for my ICOM IC7100. And uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to try to document some things. First of all, we're starting off with uh, the famous Gator case, uh, travel case. I don't know how well you'll see it, but this has the handle. We have the wheels. And uh, this is a 6U, which in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd gone through a 4U, but uh, I'll go over some of those details as we tear this thing apart. All right, here we see uh, the case with the panel off and give you a quick uh, tour about what's in here. First of all, in the top left-hand corner, we have a Yaesu FT450D HF transceiver. 160 through 6 meter, all mode. Um, put this in here because I like the form factor. Originally, I bought this radio as kind of a portable contesting radio because it was so small. In hindsight, um, I honestly wish I would have saved the extra couple hundred bucks and just bought a Kenwood, uh, the 590, but unfortunately, I don't think that would actually fit in this go box very well. Um, so that's what we're going to be swapping out today. Here on the right is the venerable Kenwood uh, TMD710, the uh, dual band, <clears throat> dual receive, uh, VHF, UHF, plus APRS and full TNC radio. Uh, down the bottom left-hand corner, we have one of these handy-dandy little PowerWorks switching power supplies, the SS30DV. Uh, notably on the front, there are power poles. That's actually going to be coming out of the box today as well because I've decided this box should be standalone and assume that wherever you're going, you're going to have power. Now, as you guys have seen in some of my other videos, I build other power boxes. That's why I'm effectively going to move all powering uh, both AC and uh, battery based into a separate box. In the middle, I've got an ICOM speaker I picked up at a ham fest that I liked because it was short, and as you see, that works great here. And then finally, <clears throat> to have D-Star capability, I've got uh, an ICOM ID880. Now, with the inclusion of the 7100 in here, obviously I will then have two D-Star radios, but I don't really think that will be much of a problem. At the very bottom here, and this is where, <laughs> you know, when I, when I put this in here, it made a lot of sense, but I don't know that having this drawer which especially is how heavy as it is at the end of the day is the smartest thing. Now I've got, I you probably can't even see everything I have in here, but I've got cables and microphone cables. There's a signal link USB, an extra speaker, and all kinds of stuff in there. Um, I think when I show you the back here, I probably could have just reconfigured this with a um, some Ziploc bags in the back and been just about as good. And uh, that may be something I look into replacing later on next year. Here on the back of the case, uh, we have three things that are mounted. Now, um, on the left, it's just an antenna switch, which this uh, actually came in quite handy at field day as I had two HF antennas that I was using. But it's on there just in case uh, I need some switching capability. I had one of those laying around, thought I'd attach it to this back panel. In the middle, the four screws you see uh, on the other side is actually a rig runner. Um, I think it's the 4004. But it's the model that has the two built-in USB sockets. And then on the right-hand side, we have a What's Up power meter um, that is meant bas it basically um, between the rig runner and whatever power source you're using is where that sits. So you can get energy uh, data about the entire box. All right, I got the unit tipped on its back here. And uh, I just wanted to point out a couple little things one of the uh, probably best things I bought when building this were these little brackets, and I don't know. The SSBRKT, and what you get is these two metal brackets, L brackets, with holes cut in them, and these are actually designed for this power supply. They're $7 a set. But they were very helpful in uh, determining what we were going to, or uh, sorry, <clears throat> very helpful in figuring out how to mount some of this equipment. Now, having thought about this a little bit more, 
one of the inherent problems with this, of course, is all the equipment is mounted at the front. So this thing tends to be re relatively front heavy. I think what might be a good strategy is to remove the shelf and move it to the back. And uh, that would actually open up a little space here in the front um, to, uh, to allow there to be some more room under here. Maybe there's something I could fit in there if I needed to. Uh, it would also help distribute the weight a little bit more evenly. So we're going to maybe play around with that as well. Now here I actually have the top shelf out and light on the carpet. I'm going to be removing the 450 on the left, but I just want to give a top-down view. I do have the GPS on the back of the 710, and then I've got the body of the radio mounted uh, quite, a f quite far back for two reasons. Number one, I don't have shorter cables, <clears throat> and I didn't want to shorten them uh, for this installation, so there's plenty of room to you know kind of squeeze those in there, but also... Um, it's easier to get to the like packet ports on the back of the radio. Also notice the power ding or uh, dongles coming out. I use uh, all these shorty connections also from PowerWorks. I like them because they're cheap and uh, really save me a lot of time from having to build them, especially the more exotic connectors like on the 450 there. As you can see here with the radio removed, this is the rack shelf I deal with and you see the offset mounting slots. I just use, um, if I remember correctly, it's number maybe number four, number six mounting hardware for everything. I get Home Depot and then uh, to actually secure the radio in here you see here was one of the mounting brackets and then I just use these thumb wheels which uh, actually I don't remember where I got these but they fit perfectly. I don't know what size they are um, but they certainly made it easy to put that radio in here. Um, if you look at what I've got here, I've also used, <clears throat> whenever possible, I use um, thumb studs to secure things to these things just so that I can hand tighten them. Because even with lock washers and whatnot, they're, they're going to get loose over time. So here I have the uh, 7100 laid out in its new location. Now, you'll notice uh, the radio is hanging off the back a little bit further than the 710, but... Fortunately, it's just what we have to work with. The nice thing is, though, <clears throat> is unlike some other radios that have a body, no cable connections um, actually come out of the front of the 7100 body. It's just a, a fan in the SD card slot. So now we're going to figure out how to mount that the body and the head in there. Now we've removed all of the old hardware, some of which you can see laying here, and have got it mounted in the official ICOM bracket using... I don't know if you can really see those all that well, but using some more thumb screws. These I got off eBay for a hundred of them for, for quite cheap. They're, I think they're M4. They're the standard metric thread that pretty much every radio uh, mobile mount uses. And again, they're, they're quite handy for this situation where you know you might want to be able to easily disassemble it later. Or when there's not really enough room to get a screwdriver in here, can't really tell, but this gets in the way of this. Um, so yeah, these are great. So now I've got the head uh, unit mounted. Now, unfortunately, this thing comes with two sets of screws hole, uh, screw holes on the bottom, one of which is for uh, a camera tripod screw, and I don't remember what size that is, but it's much too uh, large to fit through these, and I don't have a drill press or anything. Um, there are also three sets of screws for the, the proprietary ICOM mount. What's interesting is uh, I have no idea what size those are. I've looked. Um, I've had no luck, and I just happen to have these little thumb screws left over from back when I had a Yaesu 897. I replaced all the the screws that you would use to remove the battery compartment cover with thumb screws to make it much easier to switch out the power supply with the internal battery. So um, I'm going to leave a note that uh, the screw holes on the bottom are whatever the Yaesu size. I, I want to say these were like M3.5 uh, or M3. I don't remember the thread pitch, but it works perfectly. Unfortunately, I can only use one but this is tight. I've used a lock washer, but it could rotate. Um, I might actually use, if you look, there are the feet extended. I might actually use some zip ties um, to figure out what I can uh, maybe keep that from rotating and also hold it in tighter. The other thing I'll point out also is this control head protrudes out ever so slightly more than the... Uh, the Kenwood here, so I'm going to have to actually just uh, mount this in the box real quick and test for fit. Make sure that uh, the front cover doesn't hit anything. This is a uh, a slightly angled view. Uh, the box is still laying on its back, and you can see 
how much this actually protrudes out. I'm going to zoom in also to give you a view of the little screw holes I was talking about on the bottom. Unfortunately, if you look here, you can see these two little brass uh, divots. Those are the screw holes I use the thumb screw with. And if I actually tilt this forward, you see on the bottom of your screen there the thumb screw itself kind of poking through. Um, the other good news is I, I've laid the radio in and it doesn't touch on the back either, which was kind of a concern. Uh, so now it is time to remove the second shelf, get that power supply out of there, and replace it with a tuner. So here you see my LDG100 or AT100 Pro 2. And the first thing I noticed about this was that there's actually no holes or anything to, to mount it. So what has been suggested to me is try I'm going to try removing these screws and then attempting to use one of the bracket kits I showed you later some washers and whatnot uh, to hold this at the four corners um, since there are no screw holes I, for all I know I could remove these rubber stops on the bottom I'll try it see what happens um, but I have a feeling I'm going to wind up using the brackets so I wasn't able to use the screws on the side um, as they're not very deep, but what I did come up with was using friction. And literally, um, I just slid the bracket in between the body of the tuner and it, and actually they're on there quite tight. I mean, that's they're not going anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to now try to mount that to the shelf and see how that works. And here's the mid-deck out. You see there's actually quite a bit more room, power supply, speaker, and the 880. This is just Velcroed in, which I think I'll actually fix um, with some zip ties possibly or something. Although, honestly, it hasn't gone anywhere uh, in all the time <laughs> that I've been using it. Now, um, I will point out that I used to have uh, a power gate back here, PG40S. And again, I, that was removed a while ago for another project, but also in the realization that um, all of my power related stuff really should be in a separate box and uh, separate power from, from the radio. All right, at this point I have the power supply removed, tuner put in, the 450D removed, and the 7100 put in. Um, speaker didn't make it back in because I had to remove the mounting bracket and I don't have Velcro, uh, so I'll have to fix that. And after all that, I know I'm kind of still looking at a downward angle, but uh, we've now got our three radios and a tuner in place. Um, like I said, I've got a speaker that'll go here, or even room for uh, a signal link if I need it. But I don't think I need it anymore with the 7100. And um, so in theory, it's gotten a little bit lighter. At the bottom, I have turned the rear drawer around, so there's actually some space. I could hang something down here. There's actually quite a bit of room um, based on where the drawer, drawer location is, which I was kind of surprised about. But uh, we're going to give this a shot and see how this... Uh, works for me. The box I think is actually a little bit lighter. Um, I think the 7100 might be a pound or so lighter than the 450 was, but uh, no, overall this um, was a relatively good thing to do. Also an opportunity to function check all the equipment, make sure four more updates are done, programming all the latest um, frequency lists, etc. So I'm definitely very happy uh, with the outcome of this.